Hello, in this video, we'll see that we have so many repos that we maintain for experimenting with things at GitHub, uh, but with times we do not run them, right? So you might have created for Python, for Java, or for various things that you have tried, but you are not running them due to which what happens is over the time, maybe your code is not running or it's not the latest. So in this video, we'll see that how using Azure DevOps, whatever your uh, repos that are lying on GitHub, they can be run on a regular basis and you get a report on your email. So you need not to do anything. It's just a one-time setup that you do and you get all the reports in your mail. So let's begin. So this is my GitHub account. If you see, I have 48 repos. All of them might not be having code, but many of them would be having code because there is one with the name of testing, which I use for maintaining the nodes, right? So others do have code. So it's good that if all these repos get run automatically, right? Then because this karate code I wrote long time back, right? It might not be working now with the latest updates and all, right? So how I can run it? So what you have to do is, let's see. So this is my channel where I have explained how you should have an account. This is Azure DevOps checklist uh, playlist where in the first video i have explained how you can create an account and then you can jump on this video where i have explained that how you can get the free 1800 minutes because you have to claim that uh, and i have also explained that why you need those minutes right and in the previous video we saw how you can run the code which is on azure devops in this video we'll see that how you can run the code which is on github repo right so let me show you first locally so this I have explained in the previous video that when we run locally, we need OS, we need a laptop, Jenkins and all that stuff, right? And you run a command, example, MVN test in case of uh, Maven and Java, and then all the tests get run. But if you want somewhere uh, that it should be done remotely where you don't have IntelliJ and other stuff, right? So Microsoft gives you a agent where all these softwares are already installed and you just have to claim this 1800 minutes which you can get it from that video. You just have to fill up a form and then you can set up the pipeline for each of your repo and all of your repo would run and you will get an email, right? So what we are doing when we run something in the pipeline is whatever you do locally, you are trying to replicate that in a agent, right? So it's very simple. Let's uh, do it. So this is my repo, Java concept, where I generally try things. So for example, in this date time class, I have just tried the various things before I try in my actual code that I, I experiment with things here that, uh, okay, how to get maybe a particular time zone and things like that, right? So I have just run this with the MVN test and you see that some of the tests got failure and there are some Selenium uh, related tests also in this, right? You see this error. And a report is generated here in the target folder. So it can be like, depends like how, whatever report LA or extent or whatever you are using, you must be having some report that is getting generated. So yeah, this was Amazon uh, that got opened and uh, it was writing some things. Let me show you this report. This is that report that uh, got generated uh, with the test ng. Right, I ran that test ng file with the command mvn test. Okay, so now what I want is that my test, which I ran locally with mvn test, they should run on a remote agent, right? And this kind of report should get generated, right? So how we can do that is, so in the last video, we saw that how if our repo is hosted in here, how we can do this. In this, we'll see about GitHub. Right, go to the pipelines and you can click on this button on the top right called as new pipeline. Right, so once you click on this button, you get the option. Last time we used this, that. Okay, so if you see the difference between Azure and GitHub is GitHub generally provides public repo for free. Right, Azure generally provides private repo for free. Right, so you can select here GitHub, right, because your code is in GitHub. So it will give you an option to sign in with github it would be great if you can create an account with the same email id a different email id will work too so i have put double authentication so i'll get an sms 
it will already bring all my repos over here, right? So the repo that I want to run is the Java concepts one, right? It is asking that, uh, that how I want to start with. So I want to start with like if uh, with this Maven, right? And it will give you a basic step by which a pipeline, your pipeline can run, right? And you can click on this button, show assistant. So what is this is actually I have explained in detail in my previous video. So like in windows, we give the command MKDIR. It creates the directory or a folder for you, right? So similarly, when we create a YML or YAML file, the agent understands this, that what it has to do. So Maven at the rate three, if you search this right on, uh, you just search this the first link that you will get is from microsoft website learn.microsoft.com where they have explained in detail what this task does right so it's a kind of shortcut to explain to agent what it has to do you just have to change here like if you are using the version of java as 11 or 17 or 21 you can change after this dot and it is explained here right so 1.7 1 1.17 11 or 10 Right, so you can use that to understand that. And since we would be running clean test, right? So we don't want to package, we can directly run this test maybe, right? And also since we are running locally, we can use this agent. In the previous video, I have explained this in detail that right, various kinds of agents are available. And the link is also there in the uh, previous video. And here we want that this pipeline should be triggered, right? Only on the main branch. So whenever somebody will make a push, then only it should happen. Right. You can schedule it also, as I told you that you can, uh, you, if you want to schedule, there is an option to schedule. We can do that. Right. Apart from that, like, since we want to publish the report, right. Locally, I showed you that, uh, in my IntelliJ, I can go to the target folder and I can get this report. Right. So in the local, I can open this report by in the target folder, but in the pipeline, if I want to get that, so we have a equivalent task for that publish pipeline artifacts right and i will name it uh, i will name it target folder details whatever name you want to give you can give okay and it is telling that it will uh, it will publish each and everything right we don't want that we just want the target folder okay now i will save and run and and since this code remains with your branch right with your original code so it is asking me whether it we want to commit it into the main branch. So yeah, let me commit it into the main branch and run it and let's see whether it runs or not runs or whatever errors we get. Okay, so it will add this pipeline to your code or you can copy this and put it in your repo. So ex for example, here I can create a file with any name dot YML, right? And I can paste this. So earlier when I created, I did not add it that published pipeline thing. Right, so let's see, it is running. And here, if you see zero artifacts, so here the target folder, we will see it once this is complete, right? It is telling that it's coming from GitHub. If you see the symbol here, right, and it's running. So there are various uh, steps, right? We added this as a step, Maven as a step. So initially it checked out, it brought the code from GitHub uh, to that agent, right? Now it is running the Maven and then it will do the publishing. Okay, once you start using the various feature, you will learn that which one to use when, right? So the same thing which I run locally, uh, I can show you that these commands, uh, which I, when I run MVN test command, these were appearing. So it's like the command line, which were appearing in my local, the same thing is happening in the agent. So if you see here, I ran the MVN test locally, then all these things came, right? The similar things we saw here. So now it is downloading all the softwares on the basis of pom.xml or the plugins, whatever is required, Selenium or Fluent assertions or libraries, whatever I have put. So it has downloaded, now it will run the test. And whatever time it is taking, it will be subtracted from the 1800 minutes that Microsoft has given you per month. So maybe you can run weekly ones or maybe uh, depends on the time that it is taking, right? So it is printing whatever I have done, the various tests, right? You see, I have tried some program to reverse the, or to change that 
uh, string character by character. So all of that it is printing because this is running. So meanwhile, it's running. Let me show you. We can like come to this pipeline and we can click on this edit button and uh, we can play with this with the help of this, that virtual assistant that comes on the left side, right? If you if you see this show assistant, so there are various options that we can create on Azure. We can run a PowerShell. Right? So, so many options are there just to make the task easy for us. For example, if we want to put it on a Azure file share or do some copy files, so various things are already available. Plus, if they are not available, you can install it as a third party plugin, right? You can add a plugin over here. The task uh, uh, that we'll explain it in another video that how you can add various tasks. So these are the by default tasks, right? So for example, use Python particular version, or if you are running Visual Studio test, so all of that is explained here. So you can experiment with that, right? KubeCTL and invoke REST API. So various things are there. Like if you want to call a particular REST API to do some token and all, let's see that. Okay. So it's a post request and it is showing that you can put the headers here, body here, and then you can add it. So then you can directly call an API from here as well, right? Sometimes we need a token to run something, right? So that can also be done. So it's a good thing. So let's go back to pipeline. You can click on pipeline and the pipeline has failed. So let's see what has failed. Okay, so yeah, there are some test failures. So that's why it has shown as failed. Avoid this failure. What we can do is there is an option here in the pipe in the pipeline. Let's go to the pipeline and click on edit pipeline. This was our pipeline and click on edit. So what happens is if there is a failure, it stops the pipeline. So we can add a continue, continue on error, right? We can say it calls true. That if there is an error, please continue. So that, uh, and you can have a compilation task where you, instead of test, uh, you can do the compilation over there, right? And if compilation is failing, you can stop, but tests are supposed to fail. So we can allow that, that if, if the task is failing, continue, right? So let me save it and again, commit it to the branch and run this pipeline. Let's see this time because we want to see the report, right? And meanwhile, let me show you the test and all. Like even though uh, it has failed, it will show you the test. So we can see the test over here. So I was trying to capture all links from Amazon. So that uh, test has failed. Right, so by default, it shows only failed and aborted. If I click on pass, I will see the pass test, right? So most of the tests like I changed recently. So I just have named them as a test, right? Because they were not in the right format earlier, right? And the pass percentage is 84 and it is for the first time. So it is showing an up. Otherwise, when we'll run the next time, if the pass percentage has changed, increase or decrease, it will show accordingly. So you can do that analysis, right? So meanwhile, we have run another pipeline. Let's see how is it behaving. So this time, if you see that there is a warning kind of symbol over there, right? Because we continued on error and it shows that 84% is passed. And this task also ran successfully. So if we go to this artifact, we can see whatever name we have given, our target folder details, right? And it has all the things which are there in the target folder, right? You can click on this emailable report and we can see that report, uh, which were which we were seeing locally. So if by mistake you run any pipeline, you can just uh, click on this cancel, right? So if it's running like this, because what happens is, uh, you will see that my pipelines are running twice because after saving them, I'm clicking the run button. And inside the pipeline, I have written that, that whenever something goes into main, just trigger it. So there are two things. One is the manual run that I did. So one is the manual run, which I did, which you see here, right? Whenever I, I, I click on that pipeline, right? Run that pipeline. Other one is automatic because we have put something in the main branch.
So if you see this time, this time because we gave continue on error, it has continued and there are some errors, right? And the published pipeline artifact has run. If you see here now, under artifacts, one is published and whatever name we gave, we gave target folder details, right? And all of the things which were coming in the target folder, now I can see here, right? I don't need my code, uh, which is this, right, to be published. I just need this target folder. Right, so it has put the target folder and here we can see the report that we had. So we can click on this email label report. So this report will be downloaded and we can see the same thing, right? So, and now let's see that how you can do the scheduling part of it, right? So you can press the back button over here and go to pipeline. This is the pipeline we created, Java Concept 1, because once I tried before, right? So that's why you see two pipeline. So you can click on Edit Pipeline and go here and click on Loading and yeah, click on this Settings. So you can click on this three dot button and click on Triggers. So that will take you to uh, this kind of page, right? So where you can add a schedule that when you want this to be run, right? So I want that every Tuesday and Thursday and Friday, it should be run, right? And at what time I can set it India time plus 5.30, right? Or whatever time is comfortable to you. And I want it to run at 2 p.m., okay? And I can mention that only schedule be if the source or pipeline has changed. I can uncheck it because even if nothing is changed, I still want to run it, right? And I will get an email. Right. And then I can add even another schedule as well, right? Maybe for weekend, I want a separate schedule. So this one, I can maybe set it for Saturday, Sunday, if you want, just to tell you that how it works, right? And uncheck this button because otherwise, if you are not changing a repo for, uh, let's say, two, three months, it will not be run, right? So better ticket, but you can decide that which repos you want to run regularly and which maybe once in a week is fine, right? So as soon as you do it, right? So for example, this one, okay. So I can save and queue. Save and queue will start the build and only saving it will just make the schedule applicable, right? So let me delete this one. And I think this is enough that I want to run it twice in a week at uh, 2 p.m. So I will save this. And in the last video, I have shown you that, that I have set a time after two minutes and it was started automatically. And I can show you what kind of report so if you see this kind of uh, report comes where it shows that, okay, that there were four, four failed test cases, 22 were passed. So this kind of report comes on your mail ID. This is the mail ID I logged in with, right? It is telling me the pipeline name, right? And it's telling that, okay, how it was run, like it was run manually or it was an automatic trigger, right? Total test and how much time it ran for, right? So this is really useful. You can put a YAML file in all your pipeline, in all your repos, and, and put a scheduling as well, right? So that uh, on a particular day or on a, on a week or a month, it is running and you are getting the update. So, so hope you like it and uh, you can follow this series because Azure DevOps is really useful and for this particular use case, and you will also learn that how you can use it. So if you like the video, you can subscribe to my channel and uh, do comment on this video. If you face any issue, I'll try to help you. Thank you.